Well, good afternoon and welcome to Lits and RV, where we're broadcasting live today in our marketing studio, literally only one mile north of the Winnebago Motorized Coach Division of Winnebago Industries right here in Forest City, Iowa. I want to welcome all of you to today's live monthly video webcast in which we have a couple of Winnebago Rebels right here inside our marketing studio. Today we're actually broadcasting live across three different channels uh, directly on our website on Litson.com. So off to the right you'll see a chat box. If you're watching live on Facebook, you can actually comment your questions directly into the comment box. And if you're watching on YouTube Live, you have the capability of chatting in your questions just off to the right of the YouTube Live player. So that's one of the things that have made these live monthly webcasts so interactive is for the ability for us to communicate live with each of you and cover the chat questions that you have that are most relevant to how you're gonna use your RV. I wanna welcome a couple of uh, special guests with us today. Uh, Heidi Thompson is going to be moderating our chat. She's uh, off to your right and she'll be covering all of the questions across Facebook, YouTube, and then also on our website. Um, as you know, Heidi is our Vice President and General Manager. Uh, also behind the camera, I want to welcome uh, Maggie Breister, uh, mar uh, Marketing Manager here at Litson RV, and then also uh, Hope Litson, who is our Marketing Director. So again, today we're going to cover the Winnebago Revel. Uh, one of the things that uh, you should also keep in mind, though, is we can do this same type of a live interactive presentation with any of our factory trained RV sales consultants in the comfort of your own home or office at any point in time on any of our in-stock RVs. We use the same type of media so we can go directly to uh, litson.com slash TV and do a live interactive presentation on any of our in-stock RVs uh, as we do almost every day here at Litson RV. So it's a great way for us to cover the things that are relevant to you. Uh, even though we have such great media on our website, uh, we can cover the things that are really important to you and see in live high definition. Uh, also today with the Winnebago Revel, uh, we thought we would change the format a little bit different uh, for the live monthly webcast. We actually have such great content uh, on our website. If you look at each of the Winnebago Revels that we have on our new RV page, uh, we actually have 13 different videos um, that span the overview of the Revel and then also different chapters in the Winnebago Revel story in which we cover certain operating uh, components uh, within the Revel. So we have those videos. We also just launched last week a one and one half hour educational orientation in which Ben Fullman literally went through um, how to actually operate the Winnebago Revel. Uh, we covered maintenance, we covered warranty, we showed you what to do, we showed you what not to do. And that's available to all of our guests. Um, it's available to anyone. Uh, anyone, even if you did not purchase your RV from us, we're still here to support your RV lifestyle. So today we're gonna to cover mostly live questions and answers, but again, we've got that great overview directly on our website, litson.com. We also have already had a slew of questions come in overnight since we actually announced the live webcast. Uh, so we're gonna cover those now. And so Heidi, let's start, let's just jump right in. Sure, I'll try to keep this somewhat organized, but we have a lot of solar questions. So sure. we could start with solar, what's standard? Um, is there any more room? How can we max out solar? Okay, sounds good. So keep in mind, and we do have a great uh, webcast in which we covered solar 101. Keep in mind that the primary function for solar is to recharge the three absorbed glass mat maintenance-free RV batteries. So the Winnebago Revel actually has three AGM absorbed glass mat group 31 RV batteries. Since they are maintenance-free, and Maggie, you may actually be able to see this right down in here if you zoom in. Um, they're actually mounted in the cross rails of the chassis. Since they're maintenance free, um, there's nothing that you need to do in terms of servicing. Uh, 310 amp hours on those three AGM absorbed glass mat batteries. So those batteries provide 12 volt power to the Revel, but also they provide 110 volt inversion by using the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. So as the guest um, did mention, uh, there can be a demand on those RV batteries. They'll actually replenish three different ways. And we're gonna cover solar last because I know there are a couple of other follow-up questions uh, that have come in through Facebook and YouTube. 
but the AGM batteries will actually replenish three different ways. Uh, first is in transit off of the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter chassis, so the alternator off the Mercedes-Benz. They'll also replenish any time that you're plugged into shoreline power, so that would be the 30 amp electrical service uh, that the Winnebago Rebel has. And then last would be through the solar package. So standard on the Rebel are 200 watts of solar that are rooftop mounted. Uh, it's a ZAMP package that is actually hardwired directly into the batteries. So even if you place the Rebel in storage, you're still gonna have the batteries recharge uh, through the solar uh, from the 200 watts that are up on the roof. Also, and Maggie, you may be able to zoom into this, there is a quick port off to the side here that you can add expansion panels for. So we have 160 watt portable solar panels uh, here in our parts and camping supply store. Uh, they actually literally come in what looks like a slender suitcase. You can plug those into the quick port and you can add up to 160 watts directly off of the quick port. The nice thing about that is that you can actually swivel them and point them directly to where the sun is as the course of the day goes on. And just to follow up with that, Mike W. from our website um, wanted to know how big of an external portable solar panel we can add and then also can we get it without the controller as there is already a controller in the van? Yeah, so good question and, and I appreciate that Mike from uh, chatting in directly from our website on Litson.com. So with respect to those um, portable panels, um, and Heidi correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the largest panel that we currently have is 160 watts. Now, when you purchase those portable solar panels, you can purchase them with or without the controller, uh, the solar controller. So there is a solar controller inside that will manage the multi-stage charging capabilities of the Revel in terms of how much solar it applies towards charging those AGM batteries. So if you're gonna use this quick port uh, for portable solar, and you're gonna use the controller that's inside, you would wanna purchase expansion panels that don't have the controller on the backside. Alternatively, what you could do uh, is you could actually do portable that has the controller built into it and then just wire them directly to the AGM batteries. Great. How'd I do on that? Perfect. And then Jim and Ray both have a similar question on our website regarding, and we might need to get back to them on this unless you know it, uh, first stumper of the day, how much weight can the solar panel take in terms of snow and ice? Boy, that's a really good question. And we did cover that in the Solar 101 video. Um, and it's quite a bit, to be completely honest with you. Um, you know, those are, are crystalline cells that actually have 10-year warranties on them. They can take a really high load-bearing amount of, of snow melt. Um, but that is a good question. So if you wanna just chat us in uh, your email address, we can validate that to get you the exact correct answer. Um, but also, I, I noticed that I, I just recalled um, with the original question, there is not a lot of room up on the roof uh, to add additional solar panels. Now, the one thing that we have had guests do, uh, in fact, I have a guest that's working full time right now um, in South Dakota at one of the national parks. And what he chose to do was to add solar uh, panels along the sides of the RV. And on his Travado, he actually did it alongside the driver's side. And then they're also on an elevating platform so that he can elevate those up and change the location of them attracting uh, the sunlight. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, obviously with the uh, bump outs that we're gonna talk about here in a little bit, it's a little bit more challenging on the patio side and then also a little bit on the driver's side, but they could be side mounted as well. Great, let's shift gears a little bit to air conditioning as an option and you know what is there if you don't get that? Okay. So with respect to the air conditioning system, obviously within the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter chassis, we have cab air conditioning. Um, reports that we've had even on our 25-foot era of uh, and Navion products is that that dash air conditioner is absolutely adequate in transit to get almost two-thirds of the way back to the coach. Keep in mind, this is a 19 and a half foot coach, so it's slightly smaller than that 25-foot Sprinter. So obviously we have the Mercedes-Benz cab uh, air conditioning system. There aren't a lot of options on the Revel. Uh, the performance wheels that we'll talk about here in a little bit are an option. Uh, the question became on the rooftop air conditioner. So the rooftop air conditioner is a 13,500 BTU high efficiency air conditioning system. Uh, it is optional. It's not an expensive option. 
but if you know that you're going to have no need uh, for air conditioning, you may consider not taking that option. And we do have guests. We have approximately uh, 90 of these Revels that are um, sold and on order for guests. And we do have several of them that did not do the air conditioning system. If you do not do the factory option of the air conditioning system, you do receive a second Max Air Premium vent system. And that's what's standard. Not only that, you do gain a little bit more height inside the gear garage. And um, so again, it's, it's, a, it's not a very expensive option, but it is an option. And what is standard is that Max Air Premium vent system, which would be the second one that you would actually receive. And if you don't order the air, is the wiring still there? That came in off of YouTube earlier. Yeah, and a great question from one of our YouTube viewers. Um, yes, if you do not order the air conditioning option from Winnebago, the wiring is still there if you want to add it in the future. Great questions. Um, air conditioning, can it be running while going down the road? Another YouTube, YouTube question, um, cab versus coach. Ron's taking a drink. <laughs> Yeah, I apologize for that. Okay, so um, the air conditioning system can only be powered off of the 30 amp electrical service, okay? And keep in mind, since this is a B-Van, it does use a detachable power cord. Uh, so you would actually have to have that powered from that into a portable generator. So you really cannot use the rooftop air conditioning system in transit. You would want to rely on the Mercedes-Benz uh, cab air conditioning system, which from all of our reports has been more than adequate, especially given the fact that we have that flex dinette right behind the cab area. And a good question from <clears throat> Alvin on our website. You know, it appears to me that this coach is designed for people using it in cooler climates. I live in a hot climate in Texas. How well does this coach stay cool in hotter climates? Um, you know, th that's a really great question in terms of how does it insulate? Um, how does it stay cool or how does it stay warm? And um, overnight here, we're going to launch the archived video uh, that we did last week live of the insulation within the Revel. Uh, we're also going to cover then the specific R values uh, that are in each of the, the ceiling, the walls, the floors. Um, the coach holds up very well. And obviously coming from, from me, that's going to sound like a salesperson type of comment. However, we do have some great real world testimonials of guests that have stayed here at our facility. Uh, we had a guest, in fact, it was one of our first revels that we delivered. Uh, we had high winds here in Iowa. It was a 35 below wind chill. And this guest who actually is on Facebook right now um, did report that inside using the SBAR hydronic heating system that we'll cover here in a little bit, he was able to maintain 75 degrees inside his coach. So that's 110 degree swing. If I did the math correctly. And so great insulation. Um, one of the unique things that you're going to see in this video that we launch here in the next day or so is the fact that Winnebago has partnered um, with an independent automotive insulation um, provider to General Motors, to Honda, to Ford Motor Company, and to Mercedes Benz. That type of insulation that we use is then CNC laser routed inside each of the panels, which we can cover as we jump into the gear garage here in a little bit. Um, so it really provides a tremendous amount of insulation. Um, but then also, uh, we do some unique things with the hydronic heating system to provide that four season capability. But it would perform very well in hot climates. Um, just have to keep in mind, you would have to have electrical service to run that air conditioning system. So either through being plugged in or through using a portable generator uh, which then leads into the other video that we did um, that's on that playlist that we talked about on our website uh, that talks about what type of a generator can be used to power the air conditioning system, a portable generator that can be hitch mounted or just set on the ground outside. And I think, you know, we did another good comparison um, <coughs> of, we had happened to have two Revels that were kind of opposite each other with equipment, standard wheels, upgraded wheels, air, no air. And you know we have that posted where they can really see um, geography on the roof without an air conditioner and interior as well. Yeah, Maggie did a great job of that. That's actually in our blog on Litson.com. Uh, Maggie, who's running the camera right now, um, did a wonderful tale of two Revels that had the two side by side that covered rooftop shots and then also covered the different colors. And just to give you a little bit of a lay of the land in terms of what we have here today, um, off to your right um, would be the exterior called Pebble Gray. Um, this does have the performance wheel upgrade 
which not only includes the upgraded 17 inch um, method aluminum wheels, but it also provides the BF Goodrich all-terrain TA KO2 high performance all-terrain tires. Um, so again, that's the performance wheel upgrade. Uh, with Pebble Gray, if you do not select the performance wheel and tire upgrade, uh, you do receive standard steel wheels that are painted jet black. Uh, by contrast, Maggie, I'm going to work to your left. Um, this coach to your left would be the silver exterior. Um, again, this does have the performance wheel upgrade, so it does include the 17-inch upgraded wheels along with those all-terrain BF Goodrich tires that we talked about. Um, if you do not select the performance wheel upgrade in this color of a coach, you would actually receive um, steel wheels that are silver. And that would be the same color that comes from Mercedes-Benz. Just a quick follow-up question um, from, from uh, Facebook is, you know, can we talk about removability of the graphics? Sure. Probably the graphics package and, in our own experience, the actual Revel uh, letters. Yeah, so let's talk about that real quickly. Um, the graphics package is a no-cost option. Uh, deleting it is actually the option that you would select. Um, this coach in um, the silver exterior does have the graphics package. Um, these are easily removable. In fact, one of our first Revel guests was in this marketing studio when he took delivery. And one of the first things he did was, was to begin to remove the decals because he wanted to see them in real life, but then wanted them removed. So they're very easily removable. Uh, by contrast, uh, this pebble gray version off to your right, um, this does have the graphics delete option. Um, so you can see none of the decals are included on the sides. And at the time, he, I think the trick was getting, we have some guests that really want a stealth look and they wanted the actual Revel placard off. And I, did th I think that did take him a little bit more elbow gr grease from witnessing it, but he did accomplish that. Um, another question, just as we're finishing up the exterior <coughs> on the wheels, um, if you have the performance wheel package, what size is the spare? Yeah, good question. In fact, that's one of the most um, common questions that we receive is, does the Revel have a spare? And it absolutely does have a spare tire. It's mounted in the cross rails of the chassis up underneath the gear garage. Okay, so it's out of sight, doesn't take up any storage. It is a 16 inch steel wheel. Uh, so if you receive, if you opt for the performance wheel upgrade, and Maggie, you may be able to zoom in on that real good and, and see those um, wheels. Um, you do then actually have 17 inch wheels in the wheel package, uh, but the spare is a 16 inch steel wheel. Perfect. So let's switch gears to chassis. Yeah. Um, Alvin on our website just would like some de detailed discussion about driving and also idling with the 3.0 liter V6 Mercedes turbo yeah, diesel. So, so good question and thank you for that Alvin. Let's just touch on the chassis itself. Um, so this is a Mercedes Benz a Sprinter chassis, which very simply means the Sprinter is based in its commercial van segment within the Mercedes-Benz portfolio. Um, it's quite honestly not designed for the RV industry. Uh, it's designed for uh, commercial trucking contractors uh, where they have much higher buying power than, than the RV industry, quite honestly. Um, so FedEx, UPS. The attraction to that is the fuel efficiency and the durability. So this is a Mercedes-Benz three liter six-cylinder turbo diesel engine uh, that does have 325 pounds feet of torque or power. The chassis that we actually build on for the Revel is the 144 inch wheelbase, so it's the standard length, um, 19 and a half feet long. Um, but this is actually a four by um, conversion um, from Mercedes-Benz. So it's built in Europe, uh, comes over as four wheel drive. Um, it operates primarily in rear-wheel drive. Uh, you can then engage on-demand all-wheel drive, and then you can also engage four-wheel low that will provide changes to the transmission ratio in terms of how it shifts and will provide approximately 40% more torque or power to the wheels when run in four-wheel low. Uh, the efficiency to this is, is literally 18 to 22 miles per gallon highway. Uh, the coach is an 8550 in terms of gross vehicle weight rating, uh, so approximately 8,500 pounds in terms of gross vehicle weight rating. Um, 
in theory, that should provide a dry weight with a full tank of diesel fuel of approximately 7,300 pounds. And uh, we actually had a, a guest weigh, weigh his. Yeah. In, in fact, um, yeah, the guest that weighed theirs, it was slightly off, and I, I, I don't know that there was a, a full tank of diesel fuel in it in terms of the dry weight, but Winnebago does weigh each of these coaches based on the specific option content and each of these coaches will have a 1200 pound cargo carrying capacity which means you can place people in cargo up to 1200 pounds and still be underneath that 8550 gross vehicle weight rating chassis so what that also then means is that to the rear and we'll cover this here in a little bit a 5000 pound factory install, installed tow package you could pull 5000 pounds and still be within your gross combined weight rating um, is the high idle option installed? Uh, good question, and, and we frequently get this. So just like you would order a Revel from Winnebago Industries, Winnebago Industries orders the chassis from Mercedes-Benz. And the chassis have different options that they can select. Uh, one of those is high idle mode. Uh, Winnebago does not select that option. Um, so if you really think about why you may want that high idle mode, it would be for air conditioning or for recharging uh, your AGM batteries. Winnebago engineers didn't necessarily see a need for that based on the fact that we do have 200 watts of solar that we can expand to. So we have plenty of replenishment capability of the AGM batteries. Um, so again, it does not have that high idle mode, but a very good question. Um, Bruce is asking from our website, what about diesel B20 being mandated in Minnesota? Yeah, so good question. And um, Bruce, right? Yep. Um, Bruce, if, if you're already in our system, just send us a quick note. I have a great pamphlet directly from Mercedes-Benz that talks about biodiesel usage in the state of Minnesota, and it is compliant. It is not going to void your warranty, but as you read through the pamphlet that we'll send you, it will show you that one of the maintenance things that you're really going to want to keep your eye on is a quicker replacement of your fuel filter. So the pamphlet that you'll receive from, from us will say it is safe to run biodiesel um, in your Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. You really just have to keep an eye on that fuel filter though. But a great question. Perfect, and we, we got a great question from a current guest who has one on order with us. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna read this so I don't misinterpret it. Um, what is the total dry load capacity? Um, this would be with full load diesel, empty tanks. Um, oops. And you know, they're planning on carrying two bikes, a cargo bo box like Luminous with a 2000 watt Honda generator and then spare fuel cans for diesel and gas and a 300 pound motorcycle on the back of the van. So they're going to use this for fun, for sure. But uh, wondering what that dry load capacity is for them, all without changing the factory departure angle. Okay, so great question. And um, let's talk about that. So Maggie, I'm going to put you on the move here a little bit. And let's kind of cover some of the rear components in the gear garage and we'll touch on that as well. So earlier I had mentioned that the gross vehicle weight rating for the coach is 8,550 pounds. Uh, this coach will have a dry weight of approximately 7,300 pounds. Um, so it's gonna provide you that 1,200 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. Um, to the rear where we have a 500 pound vertical tongue weight limit on the rear, you'll be able to place 500 pounds vertically on this hitch, and Maggie, I'll have you kind of zoom in on it, because it is a pretty stout hitch. Um, it does give you the capability of pulling 5,000 pounds, even if you're at maximum gross vehicle weight rating. Uh, so we have a two inch receiver um, with a 500 pound vertical tongue weight limit. So um, Heidi, correct me if I'm wrong, but the guest had mentioned we're gonna use an aluminous box on the back. Correct. And we actually are an aluminous factory installer of um, front and rear end accessories. So if we had a 300 pound box, was that correct? Yes, a motorcycle, 300 pound motorcycle, an aluminous cargo box, okay. a 2000 watt Honda generator, and then spare fuel cans with diesel and gas, and two bicycles. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we have 500 pounds. Um, we're gonna put a 300 pound um, bike on the rear, a uh, motorcycle, I believe. Yes. Okay. And we're going to place the aluminous box, which I can only guess, I'm guessing it's probably going to be around 40 or 50 pounds. Um, the Honda 2000 watt generator, I actually have one, uh, and it's 46 pounds. 
So that's going to put you at about 90 to 100 pounds on top of the motorcycle. Uh, that's going to give you 400 pounds and you've got a 500 pound vertical tongue weight. So you could put up to 100 pounds of additional cargo and fuel. Mm -hmm. How'd I do? Pretty good. Is that pretty close? Yeah, we both have sixth graders. So that was a great exercise in a, in a word problem, <laughs> a math word problem. Um, uh, but again, you know, some of those things, that, that Honda generator, you wouldn't necessarily have to place in the aluminous box. Um, you could place it in the gear garage because most likely um, when you use it, it's coming outside anyway, obviously. Um, and we can't use it in transit because we have a detachable shoreline um, power cord. So even if you had the generator on the rear, we would have to rerun the electrical to get it back there. But um, I really truly believe the only reason why you would want to use that rooftop air conditioner um, would be for sleeping at night. Uh, because you're not going to have people in transit in the gear garage. So that dash air is going to do a more than adequate job of, of taking care of the cooling capability. Great. Did One that cover all those points on that question? I, I think so. And, okay. and for that current guest, we'll obviously follow, <clears throat> follow up with them to see if they're satisfied with that answer. Okay. And we'll, we'll uh, get that clarity. But one last question on chassis. Um, you know, can you get an upgraded, um, get the chassis upgraded from Winnebago with bi-xenon lights and lithium batteries? Okay, so uh, again, a good question. Um, the question was, could we order the chassis with um, xenon lights? and lithium uh, batteries. Um, the lithium battery option would actually come from Winnebago Industries. That's not an option right now. Um, we could eventually move to lithium within these um, battery locations. Um, what we always recommend, um, if possible, is to use the current batteries that you're already uh, paying for. The difference in amp hour output is not that substantial. Um, so we always recommend to people to try to use the AGM batteries that they've already paid for and then upgrade in the future. Um, but lithium is absolutely possible. We have the same three locations. But a great question. Ten dot one thirty dot one fifty dot twenty. Rhonda, do you know where that content was? Where we were at. Are you not listening? Well, I kind of was, okay. but and as soon as I flipped through that way, it was like basically right after <coughs> we talked about being a sixth grade math problem. Okay. Yeah. Right Back to core. We're not connected. Oh, wait. Okay. The Ethernet. Okay, we're good. I don't know if you noticed when I came in that it was right like 20 seconds before I came in because it flickered here, then it flickered here, and then I came in. Okay, so we're back and I apologize for that. We just had a, a temporary outage. I do want to repeat the last question that we just covered uh, to ensure that we um, provide adequate coverage for that. The question that the guest had was, can we order the chassis from Mercedes-Benz with xenon headlamps and also lithium ion batteries? So the xenon headlamps would actually come from Mercedes-Benz. Winnebago does not order that and they will not do a single order customization for that. Uh, the lithium uh, batteries would actually be a Winnebago install, and that's not an option currently. Um, what we always recommend is that people use the AGM absorbed glass mat batteries that they've already paid for, and if they want to upgrade in the future, they certainly can, but it's kind of the most conservative uh, financial plan in terms of upgrading those batteries in the future. Can you cover, you know, from Facebook, can any of the Illuminous products be done at delivery? Who's the installer? Yeah, so good question. Um, and so Illuminous is a company that does custom uh, rear um, storage, 
Uh, they do some great swing away uh, bike racks in which you can still use the cargo box underneath. Um, up front on the front bumper, um, they have some great electric winch uh, products. And um, so that company, we are actually an Illuminus installer. And so um, we can actually install those for you right here at delivery, um, whether it be on the front or the rear end. Perfect. Um, Walt is wondering off of our website that he understood that we can use the bed at variable heights, assuming there's enough clearance uh, above you. Is yeah, so great question. And that's actually one of our most common questions that we get. Maggie, I'm going to jump in the gear garage just to kind of give you a heads up. So this powered studio loft uh, bed that we have here in the Revel can be slept on at any location. So if we have it brought down part way, and you can just hear how quiet and fluid that is. If we have gear underneath and we want to just use the sleeping surface up top, uh, we can certainly still do that. It's in a slat system that can be stopped at any point and slept in in that location and still leave more clearance if you want to keep uh, your cargo, your bikes, um, skis, that type of thing locked up at night. So it can be used at any location. The only thing to keep in mind is that this depth of the bed stays at 48 inches either way. Um, however, you do lose some of the width because the bump outs that Winnebago handcrafts on each side, uh, you would lose access to unless you're completely down in the bottom position. And Heidi, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, it is 50 and a half or 52 and a half? Above it? Uh, with just the mattress itself. I we need to look at our video we did on that. <laughs> I think it's 52. Okay, so 52 wide, but then we go to 76 um, with the bump out. So there's approximately uh, 14 more inches on each side. And as I mentioned, you know, one of those 13 videos that we have right now online is a measurements video where literally Reed Burkholder and Jason Brookoff went through and picked this thing apart and gave you every measurement inside the gear garage that you can want. So be sure to check that out on our website as well. Um, just sticking with power questions quickly, um, how, you know, just talking about the inverter that's installed and yeah. how many outlets are, can operate off of that. Yeah, so great question. Um, the pure sine wave inverter that we opened with um, literally is run to every single 110 volt outlet in the RV with the exception of the rooftop air conditioner. So as you see 110 volt outlets inside the gear garage, um, in the galley, if you look at the true induction cooktop that is inside the galley, those are all hot off of your three AGM batteries by using that 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, they're also, for convenience purposes, and Maggie, we'll just kind of swing back this way. On the outside, we do have 110 volt outlets as well and those are hot off of the inverter from those three AGM absorbed glass mat batteries. So again, you've got convenience duplexes outside. And then Maggie, if you do want to zoom in, this is the quick port that we were referring to earlier for the ZAMP solar expansion. So again, everything in the coach is hot off the batteries with the exception of the rooftop air conditioner via that 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Um, can you talk about the induction cooktop, how it works, you and the, you know, any changes that have happened since the initial build? Sure. So inside the galley, um, we have a true induction cooktop. And we cover that in our walk-around video that we have. We also cover it in the educational orientation. Um, but the beauty of induction cookware is if you accidentally leave it on, it doesn't generate any heat until it senses induction cookware. So this will run off of shoreline power, of course, if you're plugged in. It will also function off of the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Um, one of the comments that you may have read about is some of the early production Revels um, did not create any safety hazard whatsoever. However, in high mode, it was tripping the inverter and Winnebago has gone to a higher, uh, I shouldn't say higher, a, a thicker cable of wiring from that induction cooktop into the electrical package. If you have one of the earlier run Revels, that will also be swapped out for you at no cost to you. So again, that was just one change that had been made. 
never presented a safety hazard, but if you ran it on high mode for a quite a bit of time, it would actually trip the fault on the inverter. Sure, let's change gears to the S bar heater. Yeah. Um, you know, how does it work and does it work when the coach is winterized? Okay, so great question. And again, we do have um, one of those videos in our playlist that really talks about this in detail, but let's cover that. So in terms of heating the Revel, in terms of providing hot water, we've invested in a hydronic heating system. And it's made by Eberspacher Industries, which is a German company, and it's an SBAR D5 heater. And what that means is that it's the same type of heating system that is used in the over-the-road trucking industry. But the beauty of it is that it is a hydronic heating system that provides three purposes. Uh, through all of the different diffusers that you see throughout the coach, and Maggie, you might want to just kind of swing around and you can see some of these. But it really provides three purposes. Again, it provides all of your heat inside the RV. It provides continuous, unlimited, on-demand hot water. But it also provides the four season capability because we have taken the freshwater tank as well as the gray tank. And with that one piece rotocast tank, we actually house it in a second box and then run the glycol lines around that freshwater tank to keep that tank from freezing. So the S-Bar heater, and Maggie, if you wanna just kinda of jump up in here and we'll zoom into this panel here. The S-Bar heater can be run off of two different fuel sources. Uh, the first is through the electric element. So if you are plugged in, uh, you can run it off of electricity. Probably not gonna be the most commonly used fuel source because hopefully you're gonna be off the grid in nooks and crannies that you could never dream of. Um, it does then also run off of a diesel burner. So we tap into the top three quarters of the main 26.4 gallon fuel tank, which then provides approximately 20 gallons of diesel fuel. And it runs extremely quietly off of the diesel burner, off of the main fuel tank. But the beauty of it is that it is extremely energy efficient. So if I turn the system on and I run to the heat source and I run it either in low or high, it's extremely energy efficient. Let me give you some stats to kind of back that up. So in terms of heating the coach, if we run that in high mode, it literally only consumes 0.16 gallons of diesel fuel per hour. If we run it in low mode, it only pulls 0.07 gallons of diesel fuel per hour. How'd I do, Heidi? Is that correct? Yep, yep. Okay, awesome. So again, it's thermostatically controlled for the main heat source. So we do also include a thermostat. If you have it in high mode, it only pulls 0.16 gallons of diesel fuel per hour. If you're in low mode, uh, 0.07. So that translates into 285 hours of heating or 125 hours of heating, depending upon whether or not you're in low or high. So we can also talk about power capabilities because it obviously requires 12 volt uh, for the diffuser. Uh, 4.2 amp hours, is that correct? In yes. high mode? On high mode. On high mode in 2.6? 1.9. 9. 1.9, I'm sorry, uh, in low mode. Again, that's 12 volt draw when running the SBAR heater. Did that answer that question? That did. Awesome. Great question on SBAR heater. Be sure to check out that four season capability video that we have in our playlist. Again, we've got 13 videos directly right inside that vehicle listing for the Revel on our website. One more question on SBAR and then I want to backtrack to the bed. But on the SBAR, can you use the hydronic system unattended, parked? Yeah, actually that's a really good question um, because it was asked um, from one of our Revelers that are out on the road. Um, and it could be. The only thing that you've really got to be careful of is that you have uh, the solar enabled so that um, you do have adequate 12 volt um, and then also so that you have all the settings correct so that you're getting adequate 12 volt, you've got adequate diesel fuel. Um, it's definitely not designed to be a storage tool, um, but it is designed to be, if you're away from your coach for the day, you can keep things nice and warm. You can keep things um, running with um, continuous, unlimited, on-demand hot water when you return, uh, and then it keeps your tanks from freezing. 
Did that answer that question? That's perfect. Okay, good. Um, just to go back to Alvin and Bruce's discussion on our website around, about the bed, I just want to provide some clarity on those, those sure. measurements. Yeah. So that middle section without the extension cushions is 49 inches wide by uh, 52 inches. Okay, so 52. Yep. And then we gain, uh, you know, per Winnebago specs, end to end, 79 inches when it's all the way down. And I said 76, didn't I? Uh, well, I think we, we might have measured that. <laughs> um, the specs show 79, our measuring tape showed 76, but I'm guessing they're going to the whole panel. So that's a pretty good lead in, if I can just jump off track, um, to covering the flares that are included in the sidewalls of the coach. And Maggie, I'll just kind of slowly drag you over here. There are two different, I'll call them bump outs, but really these flares that are designed by Winnebago Industries. Um, these are designed in-house. The beauty of these is not only do we have the fiberglass on the outside, um, we actually have an ABS shroud on the inside and then in between those is all of the insulation that we've talked about in some of our insulation videos. The reason why this one is more low profile and this is a really good shot of this is because of the sliding cargo door. If we slide back over and cover the driver side, I'm gonna piggyback this door here. We're gonna go right there, maybe. And we're gonna go right here. So on the driver side, you can see this one extends a little bit deeper. Based on the research that Winnebago had performed with target market consumers um, looking for an outdoor van lifestyle vehicle, most of them were over six feet. And so we needed that 79 inches of sleeping capability by designing these. So great insulation, it provides more sleeping capability. And then we also provide this type of a window. And as we talk about that next, Maggie, I'm gonna have you slide over to this one because it'll give a little bit better view because it's a much larger window. So this is a Sites branded acrylic dual pane window. Okay, and it's a European window um, that is literally probably one of the warmest windows that you'll find inside of an RV that provides dual pane like properties with a thermal break built into it. Since it is a canopy or an awning style window, you can leave it open in nominal rain. Inside, it does have the insect screen, but also we talked about one of our guests that has some questions about hot weather climates. It also provides solar reflective capabilities when the window is closed. So again, the Sites acrylic dual pane windows provide some great insulation as well inside. And I just totally took us off track, didn't I? That's okay. We have a good conversation about the bed going on online on our website. And just to maybe just show some possibilities for people, we found that our Revel owners are pretty um, clever in terms of storage and making this work for them. Chris is online. He's 6'3". He fits fine when the bed is extended. Okay. Um, you know, but for other people, you know, we did measure this and, you know, the bottom of the bed is 26 inches off the floor when it's down. It's 60 inches from the floor when it's all the way up. And obviously you have, you know, pretty good um, height of the bump out. And this cushion is loose, as is the other one. Could someone figure out how to provide a taller support so you still have that length higher, possibly? Um, but I just wanted to point that out so you could see that cushions are loose. There isn't a ton of weight on those sides. So you just have to figure out how are you going to suspend that to actually get that entire length cross coach if it was actually higher. You bet. So again, 26 inches. Is that right, Heidi? 26 inches off the floor when it's down. And then 60 when the, the studio loft bed is raised all the way up. Right. Maggie, this is probably a pretty good opportunity to talk a little bit about the lighting, uh, the USB charging ports, and then also you can see that track system. But um, obviously LED lighting is used throughout the entire RV. We're trying to conserve 12 volts, so it's 70% more energy efficient compared to incandescent or halogen lighting. But the one thing I wanted to show, and you can kind of zoom in here, Maggie, is you'll see these type of ram mount tracks located throughout the entire RV. These ram mount tracks can house ram mount accessories. So you can 
literally attach your smartphone, your tablet, in any location throughout the RV using that RAM mount system. And these tracks, if there's a spot that you'd prefer to have a RAM mount, we also have these RAM mount tracks in our parts and camping supply store. And they're just literally just a way to hold that RAM mount for your smartphone or your tablet so that, um, because one of the questions that, that gets asked a lot is, does the Revel have a TV? And while we could add a TV, it doesn't because most people are gonna be uh, streaming content directly off of their iPad, uh, their tablet, their Surface, their smartphone. And so the RAM mount system works really well. You'll also see a lot of USB charge points, uh, USB and 12 volt power point stations uh, located throughout the entire RV. How are we doing on the questions? Good. Um, a really common question for us and one that Scott has today, you know, can the fridge door be switched from hinging on the left to the right side? That's a good question. I kind of, or do you know the answer to that? We, ha we have done it, yes, and um, it can be done. I think the one downside to it is you do end up with holes exposed, That's my correct. understanding. Yep. You bet. Great um, questions today though, and that's really what allows us to provide so much value to you is we can cover the things that are important to you. Um, just going back to the air conditioner, can you run it on a fan only mode of the, off the AGM solar setup? Uh, yeah, so good question. Um, the question was, could the air conditioning system be run in fan mode? But really the question is off of the AGMs and solar. Yeah. and. So this is entirely run directly into the 30 amp system for the coach. And so while it couldn't be done, it could be customized. Um, but again, you'd have to run the wiring for this directly into that pure sine wave inverter to just run the fan. If you didn't think you were gonna run the air conditioning itself and you were just trying to look for fan movement, you'd wanna just order this without the air conditioner system and take advantage of that max air premium vent system because it has a thermostatically controlled fan um, it's reversible and it does have the built-in rain hood so you can walk away and, and not worry about water penetrating your revel. Another Mercedes question from Alvin. Um, what would you say the length of time that he could safely idle the vehicle? Many people travel with pets and need to keep them cool. <clears throat> yeah, you know, it, it, I'd probably want to research this. If you were just asking my personal, my personal opinion, I probably wouldn't idle it much more than five or 10 minutes. Um, but again, that's just my personal inflection because I'll probably stick my nose in too far at times. But I, I can absolutely research that and get back to you, Alvin, because it's, it's an absolutely valid question that I wish I could give you an absolute um, dead on nuts answer for. Perfect. Another question from a, a guest we have that has a rubble on order. Um, <clears throat> how can you carry two sea kayaks? Yep. They're 18 feet long, 70 pounds each on the roof without realizing the solar panel performance loss. Yeah, so um, the one thing to keep in mind about solar is that obviously the sun changes, so it's gonna be changing as well. Um, the way that the solar package is included is east to west, so to speak. So from driver side to uh, patio side. Um, mounted across the coach. So if you're placing 17 foot kayaks on a 19 and a half foot coach, um, you're gonna have coverage. But just keep in mind that sun is constantly moving. Um, to get 100% um, solar coverage, you'd wanna remove those. Um, but it's probably not as big of a performance loss as you might think. I think, to be honest with you, based on our years of experience with solar, I think we see more downgrades from people not cleaning their solar panels more so than having something obstruct it, quite honestly. Um, question on the weight limit on, on, the, on the rack on the roof. Yep. Um, and actually, uh, it is 40 pounds per rail, 200 pounds max. Okay. Yep. So again, that question was how much weight on that summit rack system up top? And again, 40 pounds per cross member and 200 pounds total. Um, how do you drain the freshwater tank? Yeah, so good question. Um, let's cover a couple of those different things. And if you can give me just a second, this um, outdoor table um, works great and stores flush up against the sidewall. The reason why I'm gonna elevate it up is to cover some of the freshwater and potable water characteristics of the Revel. And so as this table is stored up, it then stays and locks in place. 
two different ways that you can fill it. So if you have a pressurized water fill, so if you're using city water that's pressurized, um, this is what you would use to fill that 21 gallon freshwater tank. If you're gonna use the gravity fill, you also have that on this side, which of relevance to this is that if you're going to bring water with you, perhaps in gallon jugs, or use a pump to add water to your coach, which a lot of people do, um, you can use the gravity fill on this location right over here, okay? Um, there is a low point drain for the lines, but to actually drain the tank itself on the bottom side of it is a fitting that looks much like you might have in your home that uses this type of a square release to run it counterclockwise to open it, and then it just drains out on the ground. That's the only way to truly drain the freshwater tank. And this tool, Winnebago does not provide its coach owners. So if you're gonna winterize the coach and you're gonna use the dry method of winterization, uh, which means you're not gonna chalk it full of RV antifreeze, you would want this tool. So again, this is a tool that's not provided to Winnebago coach owners. Um, we've crafted this here at Litson RV. We can obviously get you one as well. But again, that is how you would actually drain the freshwater tank. Yep, and we have those. We had a, lo our, a local welder that we work with on some hitch stuff, he figured that out and it's really slick and, and available. Um, so also in this location, a couple other things that are going on here. Um, you do have a freshwater coiled spray hose. Um, you also have this exact same outlet inside the gear garage, um, right on the rear end of the RV. And again, this coiled hose just uses a quick connect uh, so that you can rinse things off before you jump inside or place things inside your uh, gear garage. Um, the winterization package is included right here, and then this is the siphon valve that is provided by Winnebago um, that is then just spun on using the um, spin weld with the fitting um, for the siphon hose if you choose to use the wet method of winterization. So that was a very long-winded way of saying, how do you drain the freshwater tank? Okay, so I just have kind of a mix of questions. Awesome. Um, Grab bag. Can you turn the front seats to make the sleeping surface of the third sleeping area bigger? Maybe put a mattress pad on it or some type of yeah, covering? Yeah, gr great question. Um, one of the videos that we have in our playlist uh, that I keep talking about is a conversion of this dinette into a flex bed sleeping surface. There also is an aftermarket accessory that can be purchased um, that provides an additional sleeping surface between the two front Mercedes-Benz Sprinter seats, uh, provides a small bed that way. Um, so in between those two, um, the height is almost dead on. So you could expand it uh, to provide an additional sleeping surface up front with that additional accessory. Great. Can you talk about TV? Um, you know, how can they get TV if they want TV, uh, both off air and satellite potentially? Was that a setup? Because I'm just a big geek. It was, wasn't it? It is your dream job. <laughs> okay. So inside the rubble does not come a TV. Okay. So um, the, the thought is that quite honestly, where most of these rubbles are going, it's going to be a challenge just to get a TV station antenna to begin with. And so there are a lot of different services that you can use uh, to stream um, audio and visual. Um, a lot of those can actually be downloaded offline as well. So if you get to a location that has Wi-Fi, you can download content. Um, there are a lot of different services. In fact, YouTube uh, just recently came out with a service to be able to download content as well. Um, if you do have um, satellite, perhaps, back home, um, in our home, we actually have DirecTV at home, we have a device called a Slingbox. And literally, I can pull up the app on my Slingbox and watch the TV in my master bedroom all of the uh, recorded content, anything live, and it just runs through that app. The only thing to keep in mind is that it, w it will chew up data if you're not on Wi-Fi. So there's a lot of different ways you can get it if you really need it. But again, keep in mind the logic is that most of these rebels are gonna be going in locations that even if you did have a local off-air antenna, there's a pretty good chance that you wouldn't be able to reach it anyway because most of those probably have a uh, mileage of what, about 40, 45 miles? How about Wi-Fi boosters? Um, yeah, great question, and, and we do a lot of these here at our dealership. Um, Wi-Fi boosters, uh, but also cell phone boosters. And um, we have a couple of different setups that we can do, um, one of which does include data, one of which does not. One can combine the two signals to provide higher bandwidth. 
um, but we do a lot of Wii Boost extensions, um, uh, Wi-Fi boosters, as well as cell phone boosters for 4G. I'm going to show my ignorance because I'm going to ask the last part of this, and you might have like covered this external communication antenna. External communication antenna. So there's a couple of different ways you could do that, and uh, perhaps if if the guest that chatted in that question just kind of wants to elaborate on that, a couple of different ways you can do it. I mean, obviously. Um, we have done ham radio uh, installations. We've done CB antenna installations. I think probably most likely though, they're probably thinking more of like a cellular booster or a 4G booster. And we do a lot of those installs. We have all the parts right here. That installation method is a little bit tricky because um, first of all, there's a lot of stuff going on on the roof and it's really compact up there, especially when you see um, some of the photos that we have and the video work that we have online. There's not a lot of real estate up there, but there also has to be separation from the antenna to the actual router itself. So if you follow the directions, you could probably do it on your own. It's a pretty good thing to at least get some troubleshooting advice from us um, or have us do it for you because you do have to have that level of separation between the antenna and the actual router or booster itself. Um, Kelly's wondering, has Winnebago upgraded the suspension system at all since most of us want to get off the road? Uh, good question. Um, what we have found uh, from the Revels that are out on the road is that they think the current stock suspension is phenomenal. And to be honest with you, I don't think we've had any negative comments on the suspension. Um, and, and that's the one thing we always recommend here. I mean, we're pretty conservative from the standpoint that you know, you, don't, you can go into any RV dealership or a camping world and open up your wallet and they'll help you with whatever you ask for, but unless we see a need for it, we're not gonna recommend it. Um, if there's something specific that you wanted us to do, we certainly can do it, um, but we haven't had any negative feedback as to the suspension on the RV. Great. How are we doing? Um, Great questions today. Good, just a question about the gear closet and um, you know, the shelving in it, uh, what is it made of and how convertible is that and how in reality are people really using that? Yeah, so Maggie, we're gonna kinda come in this location. And we do have some really good content on our website that we talk about this, um, but let me just kinda demonstrate it for you. So, one thing that is kinda unique about the Rebel is, you know, this coach is designed for a lot of different purposes, but also until our family took a two week trip out to as far west as Yellowstone, I'm not sure that we truly had the appreciation for how people are using um, dumping facilities, washroom facilities, and um, literally just restrooms in the wilderness. And so, you know, the coach has a cassette toilet, which is a five gallon cassette toilet. Many of the places that we went to literally have a location where you can take that five gallon cassette toilet and drain it right in the same location that somebody would use the washroom with. Um, similar to that, since there are those types of locations, you have the flexibility of using this gear closet either as a bathroom or you can just use it for great storage. And the question centered around what type of shelving do we use? This is actually a sealed marine style plywood. So it's very moisture resistant. This is actually the bottom shelf um, for this closet. And so I just took this out to be able to showcase what it looks like. Very lightweight, but very durable. And again, it's moisture resistant. So this is the bottom shelf that would be located right above the main toilet. And then Maggie, if you just kind of jump up here, you can see the different shelving locations that are available inside the gear closet or the bath in one. Also, you probably noticed when I opened that door, you may have actually heard what kind of sounded a little bit like metal. These are actually aluminum welded frames. And it's unique to this product that Winnebago builds. Um, with these aluminum welded frames, again, the concept is that this RV is gonna go off road in places that people never imagined before. And so we have to have extremely durable cabinetry. So the framework for this, again, is aluminum welded cabinetry that you see throughout. And then each of the face frames on each of the cabinet doors do have a positive lock latching mechanism. So you're not gonna have things jump out at you in transit. Again, a very long-winded explanation for showing me the closet. So, uh, discussion <clears throat> topic online, um, you know, availability of a fresh order. Yep. And, you know, uh, the story of delivery sliding and the scenario there. Yeah, so 
Um, I guess good news, bad news. Um, the you know the 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 good news is that um, I think Winnebago really underestimated the demand for such a product like this. Um, one of the advantages to this type of van life or B van setup is that it comes complete from the manufacturer. And so as, as you look at different options of customizing and upfitting a Mercedes Benz Sprinter chassis, one of the challenges becomes, first of all, you get to get the chassis, and then you have to pay for the chassis. And then secondly, you have to wait your, your time with an upfitter. Uh, so whether it's um, um, Sportsmobile or sports coach or, or whoever you decide to upfit with, that could be a two-year process. Then you have to pay for the upfit. The, the beauty of this is it's fully contained, so if you're a financing guest and you decide to finance part of it, you can do it right away, and you don't have to pay for the chassis and then later pay for the upfit. So um, great demand for this type of product, um, and they are backlogged. Um, and some of those dates do slide a little bit, but the reason why they slide is because literally Mercedes-Benz uh, can't keep up with the demand for the chassis. And so um, even though Winnebago being a certified installer for Mercedes-Benz, Winnebago being one of the few in the industry that are, um, they have tremendous credibility and tremendous buying power with Mercedes-Benz from an RV industry perspective, um, but we literally have purchased as many chassis as we could, and then we're looking at forecasts for production. Um, we have seen some dates slide, um, probably you know in the range of one to three months, depending upon when that chassis hits the ground. Um, we pretty much have a, a pretty good sense of the fact that anything that um, was originally scheduled to ship before uh, April 1st, we have the VINs and the chassis on the ground so we can begin construction on those. Um, but if you were just to come into you know, our dealership or literally for that matter, anyone in the country, because every dealership faces the same problem, uh, because the first challenge that you should have is that if you find a dealership that actually has one available, that would somewhat concern me because they're sold out across the entire United States. So if you did place a fresh order, um, you are looking at after the first of the year, um, roughly in terms of pipeline of production right now. Um, like I said earlier, we have about 90 of these that are on order uh, and inbound, um, where we have a couple that are available for guests that have purchased a different product from us and that type of sliding around. But um, we've really kind of adopted the slot mentality, um, meaning that when a guest commits to a revel, um, our process is very simple, but really what they're signing up for is a slot in production. And as certain things change, they may potentially move up, but they're only gonna move back based on chassis availability. How'd I do there? Great. That was a loaded question, whoever gave me that one. <laughs> I, I think we covered it. I don't have any <clears throat> additional new questions. Okay, so great questions today. Um, we're gonna keep the chat lines open for just a couple of minutes. Uh, but before we go, make sure that you get signed up for the Revel Revealed newsletter. So we have a Revel-specific newsletter. If you found out about our webcast today from an email that you received, uh, you can sign up for a newsletter that is specific to the Winnebago Revel. So it's not going to be covering things in diesel pushers, Class A's. It's going to cover events, features, gear, accessories, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, specific to the Winnebago Revel. Um, we'll continue to come out with additional chapters in the Revel story. Stay tuned for the one that we're going to launch tomorrow uh, that talks specifically about the insulation and the R values and the sites windows in the Winnebago Revel. Um, but the Revel Revealed newsletter is a phenomenal tool for you and it's going to be coming out, uh, Maggie, how often? Monthly. Monthly, thank you. Uh, so we're going to do it monthly, but it's going to have great content. And we're going to learn from all the different internet forums that we subscribe to and that we're in those same forums as our guests. And we're going to be providing that information to people that may not necessarily be in those types of forums. So a lot of great content in the Revel Revealed. Um, I want to thank everybody today for such great questions. Um, it works out really well to be able to provide a Q&A format because, again, we've got such great content on our website. Uh, Maggie and Hope and Rhonda Gertis and our marketing team, they do such a great job of all the media and content that we have. Um, you can certainly um, go through that content, but things that are relevant to you, it's great that we can cover these questions live. So again, thank you to Maggie Breister, our marketing manager, Heidi Thompson, our vice president and general manager, Hope and also Rhonda. And it looks like you have another question. One last question from awesome. Alvin, and then I have an offer for Elvin. Elvin. Okay. His last question is, uh, you know, does the sliding door uh, on the side close with screens in place? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And it does. <laughs> yep. I'm sorry. And then that was um, a head nod, Alvin. Sorry. Alvin, you should email us because while we have these set up, we could do a quick live with you to figure out that back bed and those cushions and brainstorm that together. Yeah. And then we'll trademark it and go into business. And, and we'll, we'll call it the Alvin video. But email It'll us be so the quickly, video. Alvin, and we can easily do that with you. Because we can actually do that right after um, the webcast is over, Alvin. Um, just reach any of our consultants and we can do it live with you and literally cover every nook and cranny for you. So, again, great questions today. Keep in mind also, as we just talked about with Alvin, we can do a live interactive presentation from the comfort of your own home or office, literally anywhere in the world, um, from the comfort of your own home or office with any of our factory trained RV sales consultants um, on any of our in-stock RVs. So again, um, great questions today, great content. Um, if you do have additional questions, we do also chat um, directly on our website. 24-7, um, so we have active chat representatives. They're true Litz and RV employees. So um, if you have a question during business hours, just let us know. It'll be a genuine Litz and RV employee. And uh, again, thank you for joining us today as we covered all of the things that are relevant for you on the Winnebago Revel, uh, Winnebago's new van life movement with the Mercedes-Benz.